Um, how's it, everybody? Um, the thing I'm going to be talking about is false protection orders. But before I delve into that, let me be absolutely specific. Um, violence and abuse by anybody against anybody is fundamentally unacceptable. Okay. And um, any person perpetrating violence against another human being uh, should be met with the toughest, stiffest, longest sentence possible. Um, as Fathers for Justice, we don't believe that the justice system and the government is actually serious about solving the socio-economic uh, issues as well as the educational issues um, within South Africa to alleviate the amount of abuse in South Africa. We also do not get behind the whole gender-based violence, feminazi rhetoric uh, that politicians love to hop onto so that they can continue to, to, to f have another way to divide the population within South Africa. Uh, the overwhelming compelling evidence to hand quite literally states that um, this whole notion that it's only men that abuse women and children is complete and utterly being uh, debunked. But it's a nice thing for the feminazis and politicians to use to whip uh, a certain segment of the population. But to be clear, violence and abuse perpetrated by anybody against anybody is fundamentally unacceptable. And we, as Fathers for Justice, expect and demand of the police and the justice system, as well as the government, to do their job. And where somebody has been found abusing another person, that that person must simply be chastised, disciplined to the fullest extent of the law. Having said that, um, we as Fathers for Justice know, um, sadly once again, that the child abusing divorce industry lawyers advise their female clients to make false protection orders or make out false protection orders against fathers. It is a specific tool that is designed to summarily remove the father out of the children's lives and then for the other child abusing divorce specialists, the psychologists, etc., to come in and aid and abet the parent that is frustrating the contact or the alienating parent to frustrate the contact for as long as possible. Okay. So let's just discuss protection orders. Okay. Uh, we know that at a magisterial level, that within a 3% probability of an event taking place, okay, a magistrate must issue a protection order, okay, unless compelling evidence to the contrary has been supplied to have the, uh, the um, uh, the protection order, um, overturned or withdrawn or not issued in the first instance. We know that with protection orders that because the vast majority of men do not know their rights, by the time they have uh, got them withdrawn, if they're lucky, anything upwards of 18 months has gone by and the relationship between him and his child has been so severely affected because of this fake or false protection order that the relationship has been destroyed. Now let's just turn that on its head. 
when the protection order was issued, the fake or false protection order was issued, um, there was no due diligence done invariably. There's no proper investigation done. And that relationship with the child has been summarily destroyed. Now, in collusion with the psychologist and the lawyer and the alienating or uh, frustrating parent that is frustrating the contact, you know, the psychologists now want to have phased in contact with the child. But you didn't think about that when the child's relationship was destroyed based on fake, false information and lawyers advising their client to issue the fake um, uh, protection order. You didn't think about it then. You, didn't, you weren't concerned about the child then. Okay. So... What you've got to know on how to protect yourself with a protection order is that the person that makes the allegations must fill out an affidavit. They must in turn fill out a J88. The police have got to issue a report on their investigation of the matter. Uh, a medical, uh, either by a state uh, doctor or um, a private medical practitioner, doctor, must issue a report on the abuse um, and then if necessary also a psychological evaluation needs to be done to obviously prove or dispute the allegations being made uh, as well as um, uh, all sorts of things like whatsapps sms's emails uh, video recordings um, and so on, as well as eyewitness accounts and eyewitness statements. If that information is not presented to invariably at a magisterial level, you must demand that your protection order must be overturned. Okay. Uh, you, do, you fill out a J240-24 form and um, form 24, sorry, and then you put in the reasons why it should be overturned. The other thing that you guys have also got to do is please, invariably what is happening is, is that he who makes the first allegation is able to get the empathy and sympathy of the courts. This is not what it's about. If there is a fight that is ensuing, okay, and verbal abuse is being thrown at you, you guys need to get yourself out of the situation. You need to remove yourself from the situation and allow for the situation to calm down. Okay. Um, and you need, to, you need to get out of the situation. Under no circumstances whatsoever, guys, do you retaliate. Under no circumstances. You get out of the situation. Unless your life is in direct and present danger, so the individual is got a knife and they're lunging at you, or they've got a gun, then you need to do what you need to do to protect your own life to get out of the situation. Okay. Um, once a false or fake protection order has been submitted to court, that is perjury. And we are strongly recommending as Fathers for Justice that not only do you charge the person that submitted the false protection order to the courts, but you must also charge his or her lawyer or advocate um, on two counts. You must criminally charge them for perjury and aiding and abetting your ex in perjury. We are expecting and we are demanding of the justice system to actually allow those criminal cases to be heard and for the fullest extent of the law 
to be brought against the individual and his or her legal practitioners that have submitted the, the, the perjury, the, the, the fake or false protection orders against um, the, uh, the aggrieved parent, okay, or the, or the parent that is, whose rights of contact are being frustrated. Okay, let me conclude. Violence and abuse by anybody against anybody is fundamentally unacceptable and we're expecting and demanding of the judiciary to bring the fullest might of the law against the individual concerned that is perpetrating that violence and abuse. Um, and secondly, where a fake or false protection order is um, being submitted in court, that we are demanding that the judges and the magistrates that are hearing these cases on their own um, cognizance must in actual fact charge the person that submitted it along with his or her lawyer with perjury and we are demanding of the justice system that these individuals receive the fullest extent, the, the, the fullest possible uh, sentence allowable within law under the Criminal Procedures Act uh, and we're expecting it, we're demanding it. Because this whole garbage around the issuing of false protection orders is placing an unnecessary burden on the state. It's placing an unnecessary burden on the court system and the court time. Okay, And it's aiding and abetting in the emotional, psychological and physical abuse of our children which as far as we are concerned is fundamentally unacceptable have a great day further if you guys are looking for um, support from fathers for justice you can contact us we do charge for our services um, and you can uh, approach us either uh, via uh, email which is info at f4j so it's um, f number 4j.co.za please bump us an email and let us get on to it and assist you have a fantastic day further